The Hidden Book, Studying Prophecy. This is a study on two visions of Ellen G. White on the Apocrypha and Last Day events. Ellen White Visions and Statements on the Apocrypha. Two separate visions were given to Ellen White. While each vision is different, both visions also appear to be interconnected, as can be observed when reading them. Although both visions are different, both visions each had 15 paragraphs. Both visions spoke of the Apocrypha and of end time events. These visions appear applicable to both our time and to the time they were first written about. It is interesting to notice that these visions also were given 11 years before the start of the Civil War in the United States. This was a war for which there were many who died on both sides. And when you look at Wikipedia, history records that there were more people who died in the military during the Civil War than died in any combination of wars since then that have been fought on the part of the United States. There are other patterns and parallels observed in these visions that have to do with the numbers. Before the first vision on September 23, 1849, and the second vision on January 11, 1850, there is four months. So those four months were 110 days between the first and the second vision. There are 15 days between the second vision on January 11, 1850, and the date it was published, which was on either January 26, 1850, or January 28, 1850. Both dates are given. Between the first vision and the second vision, there are 125 to 127 days. Personally, I would call this 126 days. Both visions had patterns that can be observed in seeing the many times that the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5 are highlighted in the words used to describe what she saw and in observing how these words or phrases are highlighted. The first vision, I found two copies in the Ellen White website and these were previously unpublished before 2014. September 23, 1849. Um, this is also found in MS 5. Uh, paragraphs 1 through 15, 1849, Topson, Maine, Remarks and Vision, 15 paragraphs. Second vision, or the second copy of this, is also dated the same, uh, and it is called Remarks and Vision, an entreaty to live fully for God in view of the impending crisis carried in vision to another planet. Uh, this can be found in 1 EGWLM, page 181, paragraph 4, to 185, paragraph 3, 15 paragraphs. Second vision, two copies of this are found on the Ellen G. White website. Uh, this was previously published in 16 MR, pages 30 through 35. January 28, 1850, MS 4, 1850, Oswego, New York, also found in 1 EGWLM, page 192, paragraph 1. A copy of E.G. White's vision, which she had at Oswego, New York. This manuscript is published in entirety in Ellen G. White, 16 MR, 30 through 35. 
an urgent call for self-sacrifice, views on conditional immortality and the millennium, 15 paragraphs. Also found MS 4, 1850, January 28, 1850, one copy of E.G. White's Vision, which she had at Oswego, New York, January 26, 1850, published entirety, entirely, 16 MR, pages 30 through 35, 15 paragraphs. So, there were three witnesses to the first vision on September 23, 1849. In a report signed by the three by three early believers, references made to the hidden book as Ellen White uttered certain words in vision. Here is the account in 15 MR, page 66, paragraph 2. At another time at that meeting held at Brother Curtis's in Tom Topsham, Maine, she was taken off in vision and arose to her feet, took the large family Bible from the table, and held it on her hand some time at There were three witnesses to the first vision on September 23, 1849. In a report signed by three early believers, references made to the hidden book as Ellen White uttered certain words in vision. Here is the account, 15 MR 66, page, paragraph 2. At another time, at a meeting held in Brother Curtis's in Topsham, Maine, she was taken off in vision and arose to her feet took the large family Bible from the table and held it on her hand some time at an angle of 45 degrees and said the hidden book was not there. When someone asked if the Apocrypha was not in the Bible, Brother Curtis remarked it was not. She talked some time about the hidden book. No one knew but Brother Curtis' family that the Apocrypha was not there. This was signed by Mrs. S. Howland and Rebecca Howland Winslow and Francis Howland Lunt. 15 MR, page 66, paragraph 3. So there were three women witnessing, and the first vision, she talked about the Apocrypha, and the Apocrypha was not in the Bible, and she talked about the hidden book. So then there was documentation about the January 11, 1850 vision. And I'm going to come back and give that video next. So this is some documentation about the January 11, 1850 vision. In the report of a vision given to Ellen White at Oswego, New York on January 11, 1850, and carrying a copying date of January 28, 1850, Ellen White makes a reference to the hidden book. Her description of what was shown to her in the vision contains many items and as on file comprises four and a quarter typewritten pages. Near the close of her statement, we find these words. And they quote the last paragraph of the um, of this uh, vision. So this is in 15 MR, page 66, paragraph 4. And another date is given in MR, number 1190, a vision received in Oswego, New York, January 26, 1850. Therefore, we have the date of the vision as January 11, 1850, and copying or published dates given of January 26 and 28 of 1850. Um, also, when you look in the Ellen White website and you read these visions and study them, the second vision, the Bible that she had and lifted up, had the Apocrypha in it, and the first vision did not. That's interesting to consider. Also, um, 
her grandson wrote about uh, not really paying much attention to these visions because she didn't make any further reference to them. We'll study these visions and you pray and think about what you believe when you study.